What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking out this video. As you can see here, this is going to be the start of the 6000 XP and the Indoor Power Pro project. Just got these sent up from Texas from Signature Solar. So pretty excited to get these all set up here in the garage. I took down this big cabinet that was over here. Uh, don't mind the sketchy setup I've got going on. This is the sub panel I'm going to be using. I'm currently feeding that from the house. And then we are feeding the Eco Solaris mini split heat pump at the moment. I don't know about you guys, but it's an absolute scorcher here this week. We hit about 100 degrees today. Um, got it set for 68. We're after sunset here, so I'm just running it on 240 volts. Uh, that's one of the loads this thing is going to power in the future. I'm going to use this to run this heat pump in the garage. Got a number of other cool ideas set up for this thing, so I'm not going to waste too much time talking about it. As you can see, I got the conduit box and the cables all ready to go here. So I'm just going to get into the install. This video might jump around a little bit. I'm just doing this in the evenings after work when I can. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right guys, so I got the battery mounted on the bracket, the wall bracket, that was a whole chore. I didn't film too much of that. It was uh, pretty much all I could do to get that thing up and over the tabs. This battery weighs almost 400 pounds, so it was not an easy job getting it up and over. But I've got the 6000 XP just sitting on top. I'm gonna get that mounted to the wall. There's a bracket on the top. There's also a bracket on the bottom, and I was thinking, how am I supposed to get access to this once the conduit box is on? But I guess that's why everybody likes these systems. They've pretty much thought of everything. We have access to the back of the bracket, so that should make mounting the 6000 XP pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna get that secured to the wall and uh, check back in. Okay, the inverter is mounted to the wall. We've got it all screwed on there. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the faceplate here. We have to take off this front cover to do our connections. Once again, they thought about that because there's screws in the bottom of the faceplate, but they give you a cutout hole for each one. So once again, super handy conduit box. They pretty much thought of everything with this. Okay, this is the front of the 6000 XP opened up. If you've watched a couple of these videos, you're probably familiar with this, but we have our uh, load, our grid, and our generator input, neutral, ground, solar input, our two battery inputs and our communication over here. So I'm gonna get the battery cables sent up through the conduit holes. You do have to have these uh, lugs pressed on. You need like a hydraulic crimper or have someone else do it for you. Um, they do include these in the kit now. I saw a few people say these were not included on the earlier versions, but they are including these. They're good, stiff. Um, obviously that's a pretty heavy duty connector. So I'm gonna get these passed up and connected. Okay, we're all wired up here to at least turn the inverter on. I've got the positive, the negative, and the communication. From what I understand, it goes to this bottom left and to the CAN port on the battery. So I just turned the battery on. You can see we're sitting at 55% state of charge. I'm gonna go ahead and flick the breaker on here, and with any luck, we should get some action up top if I've done everything correctly. So let's see what happens. That's on. Did something wrong, I guess. Uh, oh, we got the battery breaker right here. Nope. Oh, yeah, there we go. She's alive. Guess we can go ahead and do the peel. I'm going to have to do a little more reading here to... Uh, figure out how to run the screen. I gotta get this thing communicating with the battery. So um, yeah, gotta read the book for a few minutes. Okay, so it turns out all we had to do was set that dip switch to number one, letting this thing know that that's the priority battery. If you're paralleling them, you would select each individual battery and make that two, three, so on. So now you can see we are communicating. Uh, our battery is showing 55% state of charge, 280 amp hours and 52.7 volts. So. We're all set there, the inverter is set up enough for now. I'm gonna get this little mess taken apart over here and we're gonna tie this little load center into the grid output, or the load output of the 6000 XP.
Okay, I got the load center mounted. I've got the eight gauge wire sent down into the wireway. I'm gonna pull just a little bit extra down there and then we're gonna get it connected to the load output side. Obviously this is 240 split phase, so we're gonna have a line one, a line two, a neutral and a ground. Um, yeah, I'm probably just gonna hook this up tonight. I wanna get the AC running again. I just have the fan on, the uh, heat pump is off, so it's getting pretty hot in here pretty quick. It's still a hot week here. I don't know about you guys, we're going through a bit of a heat wave this week. So uh, yeah, gonna get the high voltage wired up and we'll see if this thing works. Okay, we're all wired up to the 240 volts. We've got uh, everything nice and tight. We've got the panel side done here. This one is temporary. It's a little ugly at the moment. That's gonna get fixed up later. I'm gonna do conduit straight to the roof, so that's going to change. But uh, yeah, that was pretty straightforward. I think I'm gonna get the inverter fired up, get the output turned on. We'll check for 240 at the panel and see how we're doing. All right, looks like we've got 240 at the output. I'm gonna go up here, try to do this one-handed. We've got 240 at the sub panel, so we should be go ahead, good to go ahead and flick on the AC. Couldn't come any sooner, it's getting smoking hot in here. Okay guys, we're all fired up. I had to take a minute and clean up this uh, ugly little sticker that was on here, it was driving me crazy. I'm gonna get that marker off of there too, but it's good enough for today. So the breaker is on, AC is running, it's cooling down in here. We've lost 1% on the battery. I think we're pulling right around, yeah, right around 900 watts right now. It's pretty hot in here, so the uh, heat pump's running at a high demand. It's working good so far. Down here on the battery, ooh, that's shiny. Uh, we are sitting at 54%, pulling 18.5 amps, 52.27 volts. So uh, yeah, things are working good. Got the heat pump set for 72. It already feels about a million times better in here. So uh, yeah, overall guys, first impressions on the 6000 XP. This thing is amazing. It was such an easy install. It looks so clean, minus my recycling bin and that other wiring I have to finish up. Um, just looks nice. It's an all-in-one system. Everything's contained in that wireway. You don't see the mess of wiring. At least uh, once I get things tidied up, you won't. So works super good. It's really easy to set up. Obviously, I still have a lot to learn. I have to do uh, some of the fine-tuning on the settings, but just to get it up and running is pretty straightforward. You just, you know, watch a couple people's videos, flick the switches, put the communication cable in, and away you go. So the plan for this thing right now, I'm going to run the garage heat pump. I'm going to run the EG4 heat pump. I'm going to be upgrading the solar panels in the backyard, and then we're going to play around with this thing. I've got a couple ideas on what to run on this. I want to try to run my central air, my house AC on this. I think it will do it. Um, from what I've seen online, it sounds like it can do it. Um, I'm probably going to try the welder over here. I have a 180 amp welder I want to try. So a couple ideas coming. If there's anything you want to see me do with this 6000 XP, let me know in the comments. I will definitely give it a try. If it's something I have laying around and I can wire up to this panel, I will give it a go. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for the future videos. I'm going to have a couple of these coming. Lots of different things to try. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.